All right, so Holton Hill has come back from but I would just consider it eight game suspension, but technically two four game suspensions. But what he did in 2018 was he did play in all 16 games, but he it ended up starting three of them. One interception, seven pass deflections, and one TFL with a total of 36 tackles just for what he did do last year, at least from a numbers statistical standpoint. And there are a lot of people who would say that doesn't really reflect how well he played in his rookie season after going undrafted for off-the-field concerns, which apparently they're not fixed yet, but you got to get the kid's head on straight. We knew that coming in. But last season, per PFF, just I know people don't like him all the time, but per them, he allowed the sixth lowest passer rating last season, 2018, with a 67.0, which was higher than current, probably nowadays, consensus widely agreed upon best corner in league, Stefan Gilmore at 71.8. That's in 2018. That's Gilmore in 2018, not this year. I assume that's better, actually, even though that's really good. But what does that mean for him just coming back in the whole grand scheme of things when you're talking about where is he fit, where are we going to put him, how much is he going to play? Well, he is another big physical corner, listed at six foot two and 196 pounds. That's kind of what he does and with Rhodes playing the way he has been playing I know there will be some there saying ah oh, no Holton Hill he's the better player than Xavier Rhodes Holton Hill's a much much better player but I do think we need to not play like just give him all of the road snaps immediately even if you're in that group of saying no he should be playing over Xavier Rhodes but I do get it I really do but at the same time, the kid hasn't played football in two months. So take that with a grain of salt there. We don't know his conditioning. We don't know how he's going to look. We need to kind of get him into the routine, so to speak, before we just say, oh, no, 2019 Hill better than 2019 Rhodes. Is 2018 Hill better than 2019 Rhodes? Absolutely. You can make – he's 2018 Hill was actually better than 2018 Rhodes. But – we're not going to go into that. <laughs> but at the same time here, it's like the absence from football kind of puts me in a little bit of a reluctant turn to say, I don't know, just put him in. He's the best. A little skeptical of that. And what I do think this does do ultimately down the little stretch here is – it gives Zimmer an option. And what I mean by that is he is another big physical corner. And if Rhodes continues to play the way he does, this is the logical choice. Because the one thing, I don't know if I've mentioned this in one of my other videos. I think I have. Not sure. But I there's one thing I like about these corners. They all do different things. They match up with different receivers. And they can kind of play the matchup game, so to speak. You have Trey Waynes. He's the long speed guy. He's going to be on your little fast guys that pretty much just run go balls. And then uh, Mackenzie Alexander, maybe not the best cover corner, but he kind of works a lot like Captain Munderland where he is really good at tackling. And the other thing he has is a knack for the blitz out, out of that nickel spot. So there's that. Then you have Mike Hughes who has great agility and change of direction that can match up with, you know, maybe like the Julian Edelman types where really quick in those short bursts. And then you have Xavier Rhodes, who would be the guy who would, like, I guess in recent matchups here, we had Kenny Galladay just the other week, and he's a matchup for him just because of how big Rhodes is. He matches up with these bigger receivers like the Galladays and the Alshon Jeffries and, you know, players of that nature because he's – Huge. He almost looks like a linebacker at times. And that's where I was like, there isn't a real option to bench Rhodes because based on the skill set he has, we didn't have another one of those until yesterday. We got him back in Holton Hill. So it gives him an option, so to speak, if these struggles continue. If Because now, like, we saw that at one point where in the Detroit game with Galladay, 
where Mike Hughes just got bullied on what kind of looked like an out route, I believe. It was either an out or a corner, I don't remember. And Galladay just killed him, pretty much, because Hughes is not strong enough. So now we get a, another 6'2", 200-pound corner in here. It gets a little harder. And so if Rhodes continues down this path, it's good to know that we actually have another option to go to and to be mad about when Zimmer's stubborn and doesn't put him in. Probably. I'm just knowing how this team works. Um, but it's good to have the option. And a little note, Holton Hill does have a roster exemption as of right now. But, you know, so they're allowed to just have him without making a corresponding move for at least this one Chief game. But after that, I believe they have to make a cut. So be on the lookout for that. Maybe we learn how much they like Chris Boyd. Hmm? But um, I also did this after the deadline on purpose just because I didn't know if Xavier Rhodes was safe and I thought that would drastically change the outlook of Holton Hill because then we're talking maybe not so much about down the line, see how Rhodes, can he improve kind of thing because that's probably what they're going to try to do and you can kind of ease Holton Hill back in because he hasn't been playing for the last two months. And then if you don't have Rhodes, obviously it's like, nah, you got to play now, boy. Like, <laughs> that's just how it is. And... I would like to know how you guys think. Comments, to them, bo comments below. And liking and subscribing always helps. And until next time, I bid y'all adieu.